Hi, I'm David from MK Dub. Now it's been 13 years since the Circlon V1 was released and a lot has changed about how we make music and maybe just in the gear industry in general. I think the sequencer is starting to kind of feel its age a little bit and I'm not sure if it's going to have a final place in my rig. But there's still one killer feature that sets it apart from any other hardware sequencer on the market. Is that enough to make it a keeper? Let's dig into it after the open. The Sequintex Circlon V1 was released in 2011. And so much about the gear industry and the way we make music has changed. Back then, the analog revival hadn't really kicked off yet. So, you know, the entire Moog and sequential synthesizer product line didn't even exist. All you had back then was the Moog Slim Fatty and uh, Dave Smith Instruments DSI Prophet 08. None of the other stuff was around. You didn't have Ableton Push didn't exist. There's no native instruments machine, right? You didn't even have Arteria Key Step. That's how different things were back then. Today's modern sequencers reflect those changes, right? You have products like the Deluge, the Oxy-1, even the Arteria Keystep Pros and Beatstep Pros all reflect today's modern music making environments. And when you take a look at the machine now in 2024, it does kind of look like it came from a different era. First off, it just looks like, it looks like it should be called a music computer, right? It doesn't look like nothing about this box in the case that it's designed for making music. But more so than that, there are some things, you know, maybe a combination of innovations in the marketplace, things like Eurac leading to the weird clunky CVIO kind of add-on module. Then you have thing, technical debt, things like P3 and CK patterns and how users having to kind of navigate the differences between those. Basically being a small company with, you know, maybe limited resources, and not really having the ability to respond to these innovations and to clean up some of that debt with a significant, meaningful redesign. All kind of is starting to, to reflect in the circle line, even in the V2, and having the product show its age a little bit. So I've already spent some time with the circle on V2, and I'm still undecided whether or not it's gonna have a final spot in my rig. It's got so many possibilities, and maybe, maybe even more possibilities than its current interface can handle. The interface is just, it's just not quite consistent enough for me. I've owned almost all the Electron boxes and I found that getting a handle on the Circlon has been trickier than those Electrons, right? Because here on the Electrons, you know, you hit function stop or function play and it works everywhere and the same way on all the machines. On the Circlon, sometimes you'll hit shift copy in a in one area and it will work and you hit it in another area and it doesn't do anything when you might expect that it would. So it's just those little inconsistencies that really prevent me from developing a confident competency on the box. I think I feel like I've spent more reps on it and have got less of a handle than I did when I was learning the mono machine or the Octatrack or the analog four. But there's still one compelling reason why I bought the Circlon in the first place, and why I want to take my time to do a proper assessment before making a final decision. In my past videos, I've talked about wanting to inject randomness and variation into my music. Improvisation in electronic music, in program music, is still a challenge, and I think a little bit underdeveloped. Now, many of today's sequencers and synthesizers can inject randomness into a sequence, but maybe not in a musical context. It just sounds completely random. And even when it does sound kind of cool, kind of musical, it often doesn't follow a musical logic. You find that it lends itself well to kind of maybe ambient genres, maybe Euro rock kind of type music, uh, because those type of genres don't rely on kind of musical construction and composition as much. The Circlon though, feels like it was designed to enable variation in a compositional context. It feels like a composer's tool and it makes it easier to kind of add that variation than other sequencers do, but it also enables you to do it in a more kind of musically logical fashion. And the circle makes it easier to do so 
than most other sequencers, if those other sequencers can even do it at all. But then there's also this next level variation, what the circulant calls oxidants, right? Which is really the ability for one track to affect what another track is playing. Say like you've got a chord track and it's playing a one, four, five kind of basic chord progression. But I have another track like, you know, or a solo, I'm playing a solo where I'm emphasizing maybe the minor third. In the, on the circline, you can then have the chord track respond to what's being played by that other track and, and change from playing a one for five to playing something more appropriate to what fits the other track. This is some next level stuff. And as far as I'm aware of, no other hardware sequels. Heck, I'm not even sure if you can do this easily inside the box. Maybe if you get Ableton with some Max for Live libraries, you might have to even write them yourself to really get it to where you can have the, the DAW sequencer respond to what's incoming and change accordingly and respond accordingly in a musical fashion. I had a hard time finding just even MIDI effects in Ableton when I was looking for a replacement for the Squarp. So I would not be surprised if this capability is not easy to find inside the box. And as far as I'm aware of, no other hardware sequencer offers this ability, except for perhaps the Squarp Hot Pox. Now, I know the Circline can do it. I've tested it out. It wasn't easy, but I was able to make it respond to my playing. I'm not sure if the Hotbox can do it yet, but if it can, then it's gonna be very interesting to see which of these sequencers stays and which one gets moved on. In the coming months, I will be exploring both of these sequencers to see what the capabilities are and see which one is a better fit for me and my rig. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you wanna follow along on the journey. And until then, remember that the music we create is more powerful than the music we consume. So keep jamming.